G'day there, Carl from Hinterland Caravans here today. I think this is number six in our helpful hints and caravan information. I think if you watched a few that we had previously, we've done things on the draw bar, we've done things on uh, how to put your awning out, we've done things about packing your van, we've done things about the appliances and the equipment levels in your van. All of that's great, but at that point you've obviously more than likely bought a van. What I thought would be worth looking at today, and we get a lot of these questions and we get a lot of the same concerns, people are not sure what size van they should have or what layout they might be able to access or even what they think they're like. One thing I would highly recommend whenever you go to look at caravans is to take one particular item with you. A tape. Two reasons for that. Firstly, there is a lot of variations in how a caravan is measured. Some manufacturers may measure the full body size from the back edge to the front edge, right? Body size. Not necessarily including the drawbar, that's, that's the overall towing length. We're just talking body size. Us here at Hinterland, through the different range of caravans we sell, and we've, we've always had multiple brands here, but let's just talk about one of our main brands at the moment. We've got Crusader, we've got Elite. There's another brand we deal with. We always measure our vans internally. So for argument's sake, I'm currently sitting in a 22 foot six Prince. Uh, has a separate bedroom one end, a middle bathroom, and a big club lounge at this end. This van's 22 foot six measurement is classified from the back of the couch, which I'm sitting on, to the bed head in the other room. That's where the 22 foot six comes from. That's true floor space. That's the most popular and most useful method to measure a van because it tells you the real usable area. Okay, some vans have a storage box at the front or they might have an overhang where there's a, an access boot. That could make the van bigger again. In the outside body length, it could be 23 or 24 foot. It's nice to know that, but you definitely want to know the interior length. That's the true floor space you'll get to use as part of your holiday. Now, separate to the length of the van and having a tape with you, one of the other things that's very, very commonly asked is about layouts. Now, there's no right or wrong layout. A layout the caravan is a very individual thing, but there are a few layouts that continuously are rehashed or are more popular. And some of that's driven by the demand from the public, but a lot of it's driven by the actual body length. And this is why I'm coming back to this body size. And I'm gonna explain a couple of things. And that'll probably make some sense. When you're looking at a van, you can say, right, I know where that's coming from now because it's proportions. Point in question, a normal caravan queen size bed, which is slightly different to a home size bed. Historically, a caravan queen bed is halfway between a home double and a home queen. So the vans we've got, the beds normally range to about 6263 in length and around 5 foot 2 wide. So if you can imagine you had a bed in your van, when you get out of the bed you've got to be able to walk around it and come out the end if you're wanting to obviously go to the other end of the van or go to the bathroom or leave the van. So you'd need some space at the end of the bed. The normal width that you would have there is probably somewhere in the old school 12 to 14 inches, maybe even as much as 18 inches on a big van. So that's sort of 35 to 40 centimetres, we'll say, of, of bed space at the end of the bed to allow you to move. You'll then walk into a kitchen area. Now, if you're someone who likes to cook, you're probably going to want to have an oven. If you've got an oven, you're going to have a cooktop, you're going to have a sink, and if you're going to prepare food on a bench, you need some space to put the plates and pots and pans and things. So, historically, once again, there'll be a different idea of what amount of bench space is usable for each individual's needs. Most vans like this one here, which I'll measure in a moment, it's uh, 1.7 metres long. So that's a particularly large bed. But if you allow that size to be added to the bed length, then the space at the end of the bed, a bench of 1.7, your door to come into your van has to be allowed for. Now that's 600 wide normally, there's some up to 650 wide. You've got a seating area here, you can see this. This, this is about, uh, uh, where are we, uh, 1200. So we've got a seat wet width here of 1200. We've also got a bathroom area. Now most bathrooms range in width from 12 to 1400. So if you add those measurements up, it's not hard to actually ascertain what length of van you need to have those proportions. We'll have people say, look, I'd like a nice open bench. Uh, I, I like to cook and if we have someone over, I'd like to have somewhere for the food preparation. I want a couch that's comfortable, regardless what style, whether it's a, a club lounge, which is what I'm sitting in here, that's like a, a household couch where it loops around behind you and there's two returns, or whether it's a cafe dinette, that's where you sit opposite each other and the table folds back. 
I'd like some comfortable seating. Um, I'd like a two-door fridge as well. I like to be able to make sure I don't run short of food and supplies and milks and things I'm on the road. And my husband's a big man, so we need a bit of space in the bathroom. He needs to be able to get in that shower and move his arms and, and things around. But we don't want to have a van any bigger than about 18 feet. And I say, well, that's going to be very difficult. Oh, no, we've seen them around. We've seen vans that are, you know, nice and open with all those features. And it's only around 18 and a half feet. And when they look at me a bit strangely and I work out these proportions with them, they very quickly work out you could not possibly fit that feature list in the sizes they've asked for, in the format they want, into 18 and a half foot. Something has to give. So today we're going to have a look at layouts. We're going to move from van to van. And we're going to look at maybe half a dozen of the most popular layouts. We're going to give you some information and hopefully you can extrapolate a bit of detail from that. Combine that with your own thoughts. Use that to give you uh, information to maybe improve the planning of how you're going to go about setting your van up for you. And when you go to a dealership and you talk to them, or when you go and look at vans at a caravan show or somewhere, forewarned is forearmed. You'll be on the ball with what you need and what won't work for you. This is what they call a club lounge, basically the most comfortable multiple person seating you're going to get. There is the odd van where you can have swivel lounge chairs or captain's chairs or pilot seats as they call them. And that's lovely but it only sits one person per chair. This is a very social way to sit. It also allows people to be able to stretch out, you can put your legs up, you can lounge back. This one has a footrest at the end of the seat that I can put up. If I had family or friends coming over and we wanted to have a meal, this has got the capacity to have the table moved. You can obviously let people in there, you can sit right around, I can be sitting here. So you can get multiple people sat at a table. You can also have this converted to a bed. Um, this table will turn and drop down. There's a button here on the side of it you push and that's got a hydraulic leg. Allows the table to go down, a cushion insert can go in here. And this seating area then becomes basically a, a spare sort of king single. It's not quite a double, I suppose. You could pull the cushions off and enlarge it a bit, but the whole principle of this is it allows flexibility. So one of the best things about this is it allows an aspect for you to be able to take in the possible views. You could be out in a valley or looking out over the water or back into the trees. You know, you open your window and, and you're sitting here with the light, the air and everything that the uh, particular site you're camping at allows you to use and you get that whole open feeling. It's very, very nice, very comfortable. We've moved over to look at a 17 foot 6 single axle van we've got here on the yard. Now, please be aware, I do mention the brands that we sell. Currently, I'm looking at a Crusader, but the information I'm giving you will be relevant across a very large range of caravan brands. It's not specific to us. This is generalised information, so you can apply this to a lot of different companies that are selling caravans. This 17 foot 6 is probably one of the most popular sizes for a single axle van. You'll find a lot of single axle vans range from somewhere around 16 and a half to 17 and a half feet. This is allowing that you're after a van with an ensuite. Obviously, if you're after a van with no bathroom or no combo shower toilet, where this is an ensuite van, separate shower toilet, the van could be smaller. But I'm specifically related this to vans that have got good sized bathrooms in them. Now, my point about this van is, People often say, okay, I like the van, the layout's great, it's the right length, it's the right weight, because obviously as vans get smaller, historically their weight is reduced, and that's relevant to having a car and a van that can be matched together with the towing ability. But they don't like walking in behind me here where the bed is. Why is that? Why can't I have this van layout with the door at the other end? You know, that way I could enter the van without being on the bed, and uh, I'd get that privacy. Why can't I do that? I'm going to explain exactly why you can't do it right now. When we look at this caravan, the rule of thumb is the wheels are never set dead centre. A caravan does not want to be set up like a seesaw. If the wheels are dead centre, it would pivot badly. There's probably a distance uh, of about another extra metre forward of the axle versus what you might find behind the axle. The reason for this is that allows the van to have more forward weight because the wheels sitting back allow the front of the van to, to load down. That then makes the van sit on your car because you need a certain amount of ball weight for the van to actually hang on your tow bar while you're towing along. You don't want to try to buck off all the time. That being said, the distance from the back of this wheel to the rear of this van is shorter. In that distance, there's only so much we can do. Now, this van has a bathroom. A normal bathroom is about 12 to 1400 wide. 
So if you measure 12 to 1400 here, we'll have a little go at this now and do it accurately for you. We'll call it 1300, which is about in the middle, right? 1300, so the bathroom falls about here. If you allow that that then has a very short distance there. Underneath this wheel is the mud guard. That open area you can see with the, with the tapes poking up in is a mud guard or the wheel arts box as it's called. Every caravan, regardless whether it's single axle or double axle, has to have a mud guard or a wheel arts box. That allows the wheel to move up and down when you drive on the rough road, you drive into a pothole, the suspension can raise and lower. That wheel arch box is built on the inside, in the box section, inside the frame of the van. Can you imagine now, we've got to somehow hide that wheel arch box and incorporate it into the construction and the furniture finish of the van. We can't sit on top of a wheel arch box unless the cushion is on top of it. We can't have our legs there. We can't have a step over it because it raises the height of the van. You can see the wheel arch is here. The normal floor level on this van is substantially lower. So in this instance, there wouldn't be enough length between the end of this wheel arch box and the end of the van to have a bed because unless you're an extra in Lord of the Rings, you're only going to get a bed about 1700 long. And that'll be a very short bed. So there's no choice in this instance but to put the bed in the longer portion of the van which is four to the axle. So what we've done in this design is we've got the bed at the longer end of the van, We've got the ensuite at the shorter end of the van. We've then filled the space at the end of the ensuite with some cupboards. Now we get to this wheel arch box, and obviously there's one on either side because there's a wheel on either side. What do we do? Well, if we stick our nose inside for a second. Okay, so we're talking about this area here from there to there. You want width, you want comfort. You also want to be able to get around this area here so that you can walk in and walk out leg room to come around and walk. Okay, hey, cameraman, sorry, back this way, back this way. Right, you're back here. Okay, thank you. Good timing. I'm now leaning up against and doing the sexy pose. <laughs> My wife won't agree with that. Against the 19 and a half foot, the 20 foot, because there's two versions of this, rear door crusader. This is the most popular general layout for most manufacturers in Australia. Dual axle, once again you'll note nice big wheel arch boxes here so we have to incorporate that in our floor plan. Rear door, and remember doors are about 600, 650 wide. Rear ensuite, uh, large kitchen on the offside, cafe dinette, bedroom at the end. Across the board, this is one of the biggest selling layouts. It's been around for donkey's years. It's very practical, it's quite open. The other thing with this is this size is manageable when you're in a caravan park. It fits on pretty well every site. The vans from different manufacturers in this size normally weigh somewhere around the oh look, high, high teens to early twos, empty. And this one here, for argument's sake, weighs uh, two one. We have a very big payload on this. We've got the capacity to add about 750, 800 kilos. So this one can go through to about 2,900. But forgetting that, they range from the, the mid twos upwards, which is a very serviceable and usable weight and size for most cars in the towing range of a Prado, a Pajero, a Jeep, uh, a Nissan, a Land Cruiser, and all the double cams. This is currently the most popular selling layout in Australia. I want to show you the inside of this one, uh, give you those proportions again, explain what and why this has been so popular, and just give you a bit more information and tick this in your box of must-see layouts when you're looking at vans 19 and 24. We'll go inside. What I wanted to let you know was, as a rule, when a van gets bigger, it's historically through the middle. We don't actually normally make the beds any longer. The normal bed length is retained. We don't try to make the bathrooms substantially bigger. There's a certain size shower cubicle. There's a width that you can sit comfortably on a toilet. There's a hand basin and a small washing machine in there. The rule of thumb is when a van gets bigger going up from say 17.6 to 18.6 to 20 foot, it's in the middle. And that middle area allows you to have much more width, much more space in this uh, seating area. That gap there allows that you get a deeper seat. You get more space between your legs here when you're sitting. You'll get a wider table, which allows you two full-size dinner plates. It'll also allow, if we pan over this way marginally, 
it'll allow a longer bench area. Now by having a bigger bench area, it preserves space for you to be able to wash up, have a kettle, there's power points here, you can have your toaster. This one's got a recessed cooktop, which means the cooker has been lowered down under the bench, and there's been a lid fitted here to continue the bench right through, allowing very, very good access for plates, dishes, salad bowls, and whatever when you are serving food. This extra area here is where that two odd feet has been added to the van. As I say, the middle of the van is historically what grows when you add length. It's very rare that a bed area will get bigger, and if a bathroom gets bigger, it's in a very distinct layout, probably around 22 feet. In these 18, 19, 20 foot vans, the big space game is in the floor area in the middle. Kitchen sink, bench top, on the other side again, this wider seating area. Now if I just sit in that, you can see now if I sit in here, I'm 5'10", I'm 110 kilos of Australian muscle. There's quite good width here. I can fold this table out. It's not too tight across my stomach. There's enough space for two large plates. If you can imagine this being a plate for argument's sake, I'll fold this in half and we'll do the, fa the false plate idea. Two large plates can fit there. The table's wide enough for condiments. And if I'm sitting in this, in this width cafe dinette and there's another person sitting opposite, we're not going to be knocking knees. That's the extra space. Looking at that kitchen area, for sure, as the van gets bigger, we've gained that extra kitchen bed space. Obviously what happens, for everything that's happening at floor and mid-level, the same thing is happening at the upper level. So if we have a look at the upper cupboards now, it'll allow us to promote the fact that you're getting extra overheads. So you're getting that width. One, two, three. Bent space and it's all proportional. You've got your cafe dinette. As it's got wider and longer than the one on the, the little brother, the 17 foot six, we obviously get more overheads up here as well. So three big cupboards. We get a bigger window. So that window is pretty evident. If you have a look at that, it's a nice big window. It's at least 30 or 40 centimetres longer, which gives you great access for fresh air, a bit of a panoramic view. Screens are there, lovely facility. Just makes being in this van much more comfortable. What I also want to tell you about with this van is the upgrade to the payload. As you go to a dual axle van, Historically, again, it can be different, but it's not normally. Dual axle spreads the weight. That's four wheels, two axles, versus a single axle with just a wheel either side. You can get a substantial increase in the payload capacity. The payload is the actual volume of product you carry. Food, clothes, shoes, water, baked beans, jewelry, pots, pans, fishing gear, whatever. So as you move to a dual axle van, you'll have a higher load capacity. This van has seven or 800, a single axle van would probably have 300 less, might be four or 500, right? And some brands have got 300 in a single and 500 in a double. But it's nice to know that if you are going to carry more equipment and you move to a bigger van, you've got that safety margin of the higher payload level, which is always associated with the double axle. I like the double axle myself as well. If you're ever towing in a single axle van and you're unlucky and you ran over something sharp on the road, you've got a flat tire, it's very difficult to do much than just stop because you've got that one tire that's now deflating or flapping around, making a noise. If you had a dual axle van, believe it or not, I've heard of people who've had a dual axle van, drove for a couple of hours, pulled up at a service station to get fuel, didn't even realise they had one of their tyres flat. Because the old tripod theory, the weight is then redirected between the other three inflated wheels. It means the van doesn't necessarily get wobbly, it's not dangerous as such. You're not in an emergency position where you've got to pull over straight away. I like the dual axle, it spreads the weight, gives me more stability on the road, travels more stable, much easier for me to then hook on my car and do those sorts of things tow. The only disadvantage, small single axle van, if you had to park it, the old single axle, it's like doing the dance. One point on the ground, one point of contact, very good to pivot, easy to turn, easy to park. So if you're going to buy a dual axle and you've had a smaller van, just be mindful it takes that little bit of extra work to bring it around a corner or a little bit of extra work to pivot it if you're backing onto a caravan site. But for that small inconvenience, I must admit, I'm still a very big fan of the dual axle caravan. We'll have a look at our third model now. See what you think about this one. This is a reverse layout. This is one where the actual bedroom, when in this van, the bedroom is at the front of the van, on the drawbar end of the van. 
and the bathrooms at the tail end of the van. We're going to look at a van where that's completely flipped. Now you wouldn't think there's a lot of difference, but there is. So I came down to this end of the van, which is the bed head end, and this bed is at the front of the van, so we're talking a bed that is facing the drawbar. When a van's made, obviously we don't make them in a square box shape because that's not terribly aerodynamic. We need the wind to roll over the top to improve the travelling of the van and the fuel economy of your car. So the van will have a shape like that. It'll come up from the floor, which is flat, and it'll come up the front and roll over the top. That roll is reflected here inside. I don't know if you can make it out, but it's reflected here inside this cupboard. So any brand of van, it doesn't matter what brand or what size for that matter, if the bed is at the drawbar end of the van and you're going to have wardrobe cupboards like these or any other cupboard, those cupboards are going to run out of storage width as the, as the van rolls in the roof area. Now you'll note here there's a, there's a hanging bar here. It's a little bit restricting because it's caught in that wedge. One of the benefits of any van you can buy that may have the bedroom at the back end of the van where it is squared off because that's the, the taillight end of the van those cupboards wouldn't suffer that roll. A lot of people still like this layout and they live with that slight disadvantage because they prefer their bathroom at the back. And I suppose, to be fair, when the bathroom's at the back, the shower is a little bit bigger because it's not caught in the roll if it was here. Or the cupboards are a bit deeper. But be mindful, a lot of vans, this one's not too bad actually. That's a reasonable size area. I can sort of reach in there. I don't know whether you can make that out. It's, it's probably a metre deep and it comes back up here to maybe three or four hundred centimetres wide at the top. But that scalloping of the roof in some vans is almost to the pyramid point. It makes it very difficult to have clothes sitting in there on hangers, shirts, blouses, trousers, because you'll have very little space to put a coat hanger. Things will all be pulled sideways, they'll be caught up. Double check whenever you look at a van with a cupboard, a bedroom hanging cupboard down by the front of the van at the drawbar end, check if there's any reasonable access. Some of the manufacturers really fall down in that area. We're pretty good, we've got a couple that are tight, we've got a couple that are exceptional, but some vans are very poor. Check that, it'll save a lot of disappointment for the first time you want to go holidaying, you take a big bundle of clothes to hang in there, and you can't even close the door with the coat hanger because it's all too tight, it's jammed in and caught in that wedge in the roof. Tip for new people looking at vans. Okay, I've probably got you a little bit confused here. It looks very similar to the shot we just did but I've actually left and walked down about 20 metres to a different van. Yes, I'm standing by the bedside uh, robes, and you probably can't tell to look, but this is not the drawbar end of the van. This bed is set, as I mentioned, which is hard to find, at the taillight end of the van. This is the dead square box section roof meeting the wall, a true right angle. The benefit of that, as I said, is this cupboard space. You can see here, we could get a shot with my arm in there, but that cupboard is much wider and this height in here and the space from the hanging bar is much greater. That's because we're not caught, as I mentioned, in that roll in the roof. That's a much more usable space, tremendously convenient for hanging clothes and storing things. The other side of that, and if we pan my way a little bit, we also get, because we've got a dead flat back, a perfectly vertical bed head. It's not coming on a raked angle, it hasn't got a sort of a, a cutaway section that pivots away, it's dead flat. What that means is I can sit up in bed comfortably with a cushion behind me, plenty of headroom, no concern about the overhead cupboards, flat back and read a paper. It makes it very easy. The other thing is all the overheads are a bit deeper because once again the cupboards don't suffer with that roll in the roof. That's that layout I've mentioned. If you can find this, it's very worthwhile having a good look at it. Now, talking about reversing layouts, we're going to turn around a second here and look in the kitchen area. A lot of people don't realise that the kitchen and the seating can be flipped. E.g. the kitchen in this van is on the annex side of the van. That means when you're in the kitchen, you're looking out into the actual open area across the van to where the seats, your bicycle, your card table or whatever might be. You can open the window, you can talk outside to people in your annex or your rollout awning, wherever they are, and you can participate. You can offer them a coffee. They can pass you in something. The seating side is on what we call the driver's side, the road side of the van. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but if I was to flip this and have my seats on that side, whenever I'm in my kitchen and I'm looking out, if I'm in a caravan park particularly, 
it's pretty boring because I would be looking normally on the roadside of the van at the other van right beside me because they, they run side by side. For me, having the kitchen or the servery side of the van on the annex or rollout side, that what we call the passenger side of the van, is much more serviceable, it allows flexibility, it allows you to be included in whatever's happening outside because you're on the active side of the van. Just be mindful of which side you have your kitchen on, where your window is, where your seating is, and have a think if that's the side you'd like to most be looking at. It. So back to what I was talking about with that kitchen, you can see now this kitchen, as I mentioned, this is on the passenger side or the rollout awning side of the van, and you can see I could be cooking away here, preparing food or drinks. If people are sitting out here in conversation, relaxing, watching the passing world, having a chook chat, I can be part of it. Hey Bob, did you want a coffee? Oh, okay, I'll talk to you soon. Pass that sandwich in, Steve, I'll put that in the fridge. You can sort of participate, you can hear what's going on. You're not necessarily isolated. If the kitchen, and I'll turn the camera, if the kitchen and the seating area here are in line, and you can see this area here, this, this, this side support frame of the kitchen, is absolutely dead square with the side support frame here of the seating area. And it's the same length, you can't see it, but I can tell. They run exactly the same, they're 1800 wide. Those two areas can literally be flipped. When you sit here on this side, okay, it's not such a big deal. You can look outside. If you want the window open, a bit of fresh air, great. But I would much prefer to have my kitchen on that side of the van. You have your table and chairs out there. You could have your TV set out there. And most of your guests would be out there. Just take that into account when you're ordering a van. If it's not already on that side, what we call the annex side or the passenger side of the van, ask your manufacturer, can I flip it over? Okay, now this is a bit extreme, and I must be honest, at 110 kilos and 5'10 half, this is not necessarily a bed made for me. But I was determined to demonstrate something to you, and only a true caravan man would do this, so you owe me, anybody who's looking at bunk vans. This is a child's bunk. We're in a family bunk van. I'm going to lay down here now. Now, to try and make this look half decent, I must be honest, guys, I am holding my stomach in for all I'm worth because I'm trying to look quite reasonable for you. Am I looking like a model out of the Clio magazine? How am I looking? Fantastic. Right, thank you for that. What I'm demonstrating here, folks, is whenever you're going to buy a bunk van, and there are families out there buying caravans, you must know the size of the bunk. There are children these days, they blame it on the chicken, of course, but there are children these days that are quite big. If you get a short bunk van, and you buy it when your kid's 12 or 13, by the time he's 16, he's never gonna fit. This is 185, I think, from memory, length of bunk. This is great. Any child will get a very good use out of this until they're probably in their teens. Check the size of the beds whenever you buy a bunk van. I can sleep in here quite easily. It's wide enough for my shoulders. It's long enough. I've got some shoes on, so I wouldn't normally have those. And it's quite comfortable. We've got a light, we've got a window, I've got a 12 volt point for charging things here. If I was a child and my family bought a bunk van, I'd be very happy in here. We'll move away from this because it's breaking my neck. But I wanted to give you an idea. When you buy a bunk van, check the size of the bunks. They're not all the same. Check the length, check the width. Get the biggest bunk you can. I've managed to pry myself out of the bunk. This is a double bunk van. Now, the reason I'm still talking to you about bunk vans the family market has grown dramatically in caravans, and I mean dramatically. We get inquiry non-stop now for families looking to get a bunk van. This is a double bunker with the bunks running across the van. That's the best layout in my eyes for this size van. This is 19 and a half, 20 foot again. And it's got a combo shower toilet just on this wall behind me. There's a door here just forward of me. If the camera pans in, spot it out. There's a door here, and in there there's a shower one end and a, a little toilet almost sort of directly under the shower and the basin in the side. So it's what we call a combination shower toilet. It's a bit like being in a plain toilet if you can understand the principle. It's a lot better than having no bathroom. Okay, it's a little bit tight, but if you're traveling and you want a free camp and you want the independence and the safety to have your own shower and toilet on board, it's a great option. The other thing is a combo shower toilet in a bunk van buys you two things. It buys you some extra space because you're not losing the complete width of a full bathroom that would normally take up one third and then a basin in the middle and then the shower on the other side. So this whole back area would be gone. We'd have to then reposition the bunk somewhere else. As we push the bunks further down, that would have to push the seating down. That would have to reduce the bed area. So it would get very tight. So by far, the majority of people buying vans for family with bunks 
Normally, err on the side of space is the big thing. We want nice and open, we want storage, and they get a combo shower toilet. A combination shower toilet is fantastic. This fan's got some extra cupboards here on this side, two bunks, some storage uh, boxes. They're like a pigeonhole at the end of this bunk. That's our combo shower toilet. You can sort of see there's a, a molded cubicle there. There's a shower down this front side of it. There's a toilet here. And this one's got a courtesy curtain so that when you're showering, you don't get the loo all wet. But that's your combo shower toilet. You get in there, you do your bits and bobs, dry yourself off, come out and put your clothes on. On the other side of the uh, bunks, you can see there's two open box sections. They call those pigeon holes or cubby holes. They're used for children to put their computer in there, their bits and bobs, their sand shoes, their hats. You know, I suppose you can put some folded up clothes and t-shirts in it. just gives the kids somewhere to put things. Once again, if you're going to buy a bunk van and there's no storage for children, apart from these two main cupboards here, and this one's got quite a good sized cupboard you can open up. So on this side now, we've got the cupboards. Now there's an upper cupboard here, so that'd be your bulkier storage for the children. There's a lower cupboard, which is more of a laundry hutch. You see there's a shelf here to put detergents and soaps and things on, and a washing machine. Now how handy is that? If you're going to travel, if you've got children, you'll know one thing, they get messy, they make a mess, and their clothes are dirty and they spill things 24-7. So having your own washing machine is a very convenient option. So we've got a washing machine box, an upper cupboard, double storage, one for each bunk, We've got nooks at the end of the bunks, both sides, top and bottom for storage. On the bottom bunk, there's actually pull-out drawers under it. So as far as it goes, this van's got a lot of storage. Whenever you're looking at a bunk van, make sure you take into account what storage you've got. Otherwise, all you're gonna have is a sleeping area, and all the goods and chattels your kids bring will be either on your bed or piled up out in the footpath. Storage is a must. Now, as far as seating in the van goes, once you've got two bunks and you've got children, you may have a friend, You've got yourself and your partner, you need a good seating area. So this is a side club lounge. We spoke about club lounges in the very first part of this video. This is a side club lounge, so you get the nice long end of the two returns. This gives you enough space to probably sit one, two, three, four, probably five people comfortably and have access to be able to eat, have a coffee and chat. That's great. Once again, if you're in a bunk van and you don't have enough seats for everybody, what are you going to do? You're going to have to be sitting outside on fold up chairs. Okay when the weather's fine, but if it's not, or it's cold, or it's scorching hot, you want to be able to have someone to sit inside, so check the seating area. You've got your parents' retreat down this end, so you've got your full-size bed at the back end of the van, at least you're separated from the children to some point. Once again, nice way to keep yourself and your wife or your partner with a little bit of privacy, because the kids can go to bed a bit earlier and you can sit down here or lay down here and read a book and you're not necessarily all on top of each other. The other benefit of this fan, and as far as you won't see it from there, but this is running a very large fridge. This is a two-door, 200-litre Waco. Now, I couldn't recommend highly enough having the benefit of a two-door fridge. If you travel and you keep your meats, your fish, your veggies, and things that can spoil in a separate freezer, and you're not always having to open the freezer every time a kid goes to the fridge to get milk or butter or an apple, it dramatically improves the capacity for that fridge to keep things cold. This fridge is also raised up off the floor, so when you are getting salads and, and fruits and things out of the crispers at the bottom, you're not down on your haunches. It's a three-way fridge, but you can also get fridges that run specifically on solar. If you're a family and you're going to go free camping a lot, you probably have to look at a compressor fridge. That's where it runs on specialised battery power. You're going to need a couple of solar panels and a couple of big batteries. This is a three-way, gas, electric and 12 volt. But remember, when you buy a bunk van, please check the size of the bunks, both width and length. Check storage volume for the children, for their clothes, for their shoes, for their games, for their computers and whatever. If you can get a washing machine, that'll allow you that freedom and not have to rely on a laundromat somewhere. Think about your seating. If there's four or five of you and it's nice to eat as a family, try to find a van with a proper seating space. A small cafe dinette's not going to cut it. You'll be sitting outside in the hot days or the cold or the breeze, and it's nowhere near as comfortable. Mozzies, whatever. If you've got the option to sit inside as well as outside, it'll really make owning a family van a much more pleasant opportunity for you to holiday in, and a pleasant van to travel in, I suppose. Having the parents' bedroom separated at one end gives you a little bit of freedom, a little bit of privacy. Having a two-door fridge, absolutely a must. When I buy a bunk van, I look for those points every time. 
you may spend a little bit more on a van that's got a bathroom like this one with a combo shower toilet, you get privacy, you get safety, you don't have young children wandering up and down the toilets in the night. Your wife has got privacy, she's got convenience. Dark, cold, wet days, you've got your own toilet. You've got hot and cold water on board. It absolutely changes the flexibility of what sort of holiday and camping and caravan you can do. This is around about the mid 60s for a family van. You can get vans back in the mid 50s. Quality, build, fit out and finish will change those price structures. But when you're buying a bunk van, size and storage and bunks, that's the big secret. Get the right size bunks. Don't rush in and buy the cheapest bunk van. You won't last with it. It'll grow, you'll grow out of it or you'll overgrow it, I suppose. Your kids will get too big. There won't be enough seats. Your fridge won't hold enough. Take your time. Have a really good look around and buy a van that'll see you right through that period. That way you'll get the most out of the spend, you'll be happy with your van and you won't have to change it in the near future. That's a smart way to buy a bunk van. Thanks for your time today. We'll catch you next time when we do Hinterland Caravans. The questions you know, the questions you don't know. Tip bits and making caravanning fun. Have a good day.